Paul School, brought to you by The Tote, with Luke Parkinson, Jamie Hart and Jamie Benson. So Richard, obviously we're as far as where as you really can be from the stands now, this will be where things really start heating up and where your race can be won and lost as you're going up the hill just as it rises there. Yeah, and you're at the end of the back straight, you're just saying it goes a lot quieter. There's, you know, there's obviously there'll be a few people are on the outside, but it's a quiet place and the real your sort of business head comes on now. You know, you actually it's an important part of the race. Um, say it's really starting to hot up and, and people are getting quite important where they need to be and where where the leader is, how far you want to be behind the leader, and if you, you know how you, you again you start to know how you're going and how you're travelling. To, to think what you're gonna what you're gonna do for the, for the last bit of the race, but I think again the, the next jump for on both courses here is the open ditch. You know, the open ditch you jump really well, but obviously when a horse starts coming under pressure in these type of races, a mistake here can, can be completely. You know, even if the horse doesn't fall, you know they they can literally knock the stuffing out of horses, and if they dra drag their back legs through and hit it hard, you basically your race is over. So um, again, you you're, you're trying to be really positive and get a good jump and everything else but you know you're also just trying to hold on to a bit you again you, even though it's a really important part of the race you still know there's you know a, a, a good few more defenses to jump so you're it's that it's that you want to ask enough for the horse to make sure you keep that position but not too much to to waste, waste energy for the end of the race so it's it is an important part of the race and even over hurdles um you know on the on the on the new course this is the third last hurdle so you know you, you need to keep being in the right position um you know, for for, for for when you turn the top, the, the bend at the top of the hill. So there's lots of things. By the time you come to the end of the back straight, you're trying to think about lots of different things at the same time. The track sort of starts to change depending on what course it's on and, and how many hurdles there is left to jump makes it more of a staying test than it does a speed test. Yeah, definitely. On both courses, that, that is the, they, they always say that, you know, there's on, on the new course, um, there's less hurdles to jump, but almost you get racing earlier. So, so you need a bit more of a stayer, you know, and, and again, uh, on the chase course you know, for the gold cup it's it's a real it's, it's a long way to go from here um with plenty of fences to jump and that but and, and you often always in these championship races you'll get racing a little bit further out than you would on a normal day so so so, so again they're, they're all things that you're trying to think of um but again it's it's that also another thing is that the horses in front of you some of them that aren't going so well will start coming back so you don't want to be behind the wrong horse either so it's there's lots going through a jockey's mind um but again, when we get to the, the brow of the hill, we'll, we'll see just you know how steep it is going down afterwards. And that, that for, for me, that bend at the top of the hill is probably one of the key points of, of any race at Cheltenham. And obviously, one time when you were absolutely cruising at this point in the race in the champion hurdle with Rooster Booster, and he's almost pulling your arms off. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a sort of he was a, a, a unique horse that um, like he always wanted to give 200%. He, he he didn't know how not to to do his best, but. It was always my biggest problem was trying to get him to almost relax and give himself a chance to to finish the race. But the year he won the champion hurdle, it all went really well. Um, Into Sky Falcon went off very very fast, and they went a really strong gallop. So you know, again, the faster they go, the easier it was to get him to relax. Um, he, you know, he was very relaxed. And then all of a sudden, I started passing a couple of horses down the back straight, um, just to sort of slowly get into the race. And by the time I was coming up here, he, he was still quite relaxed. But I, I knew. As soon as I hit the, the downhill ground, I was not going to have <laughs> as much sort of chance keeping him relaxed. Um, but again, you know, again, it was one of those races, not not on timber to Native River. It all just went, you know, wherever I went was the right place, and horses almost moved out the way to so let me, you know, let me get involved and let let it, let it all happen. So again, races like that, you need the right horse, but you everything just went perfectly for me on the day. And often jockeys, we hear them saying in the media that oh you give me a great feel i imagine that day that's <laughs> did give you a great feel well i'm pretty sure even if i was still riding now or i rode for another 20 years there's no way in the world i would ever get nearly run away with going down to the second last hurdle yeah. you know he was as we turned the, the bend at the top of the hill here he actually got keener and keener like you know most horses would start to get tired and and, and sort of you almost have to ask them for a bit more but he was you know again the opposite he was tanking when we went down the hill and yeah. I think the commentator even said he Rooster Booster's tanking, and you yeah, just yeah. shouldn't you shouldn't hear that at the festival or well in any race we go into the second last hurdle. But he yeah. was again everything was right for him on the day, and um, you know he'd improved from a handicapper up to champion hurdle class. And I think I think for me and Philip, 
pubs. You know, I think, you know, he was one of the very special days we had together. And when a horse is running that keen, what, what do you do? Do you just hold on tight and hope that you stay on or are yeah. you just trying to get some kind of control? Well, he was, he, he, again, he was a horse that, you know, he was, you know, we know he had a great chance, but he, he was sometimes, he was his own worst enemy. He'd give, he'd do too much and, and then maybe not quite finish as strongly as you, you would hope. And I was just thinking, just, just wait and just wait. Um, and that's all I, yeah, always going through my mind from the top of the hill here to the, to the turning in. And then once I got to the turn in, I sort of went, okay, off we go. And then literally, you know, he took off up the hill as well. It was, and it, 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 he, he was a quick jumper of a hurdle, but he wasn't probably a great jumper of a hurdle. And, um, but I'd say the last hurdle, the champion hurdle, he jumped that hurdle better than he jumped any other hurdle in his life, <laughs> which, you know, again, it just shows on the day. Yeah, it was, it was his day. And um, yeah, he did, definitely one of the best days. Brilliant stuff. And obviously we're at the top of the hill now, it often gets says on commentary and you hear it so many times. And it's, it's a tough fence, this one, isn't it? Yeah, well, again, you've, you've just jumped the open ditch, and again, if the horse is, you know, in a three-mile chase, you know, you've, you've you've gone a long way by now, and if they if they're starting to find that hard, and obviously they're probably going to put a little bit more effort in to jump the open ditch, there's a bit of a wider fence. You know, by the time they get up here, it's uphill all the way, as you can see, back from the open ditch. Yeah. It's a good pull. So by the time they get here, sometimes you, you'll, you'll feel some horses are just a bit leg weary, and it feels like their legs are getting stuck in the ground. So. Um, Again, you're, you're almost hoping to meet this, not on a long stride, just on a nice stride, just to pop over it. For some horses, it's just almost to get a little bit of air back in their lungs if they are struggling. Um, but again, yeah, for me, it's sort of that, that point where you, you, you start to know for sure if you've got a chance or, or actually you're sort of thinking, well, hopefully I might pick some, some minor money up, but I'm, I'm, I can't see that my, my chance of winning is probably getting slimmer and slimmer. And twice you must have got to this point at least and thought, I've got a right chance here. Yeah, um, yeah. Look again. It's, it's there's no better feeling than when you jump this fence. If you jump it well, and you land, and, you, and the horse is, you know, almost as I say, you, you, you're sat there, and, and the horse, you can feel he's got more. He's got more to come. Um, and Nature River was, you know, almost the the perfect example. He, he popped over this, and you know, we we built the sort of speed up, I suppose, for the last mile from when we when we went past the stands, and obviously a lot of horses. Like I didn't, I didn't dare look round to see how everyone else was going, but I, I knew that I'd gone a really good gallop. I knew he'd jumped really, you know, really well in his rhythm. So I thought, well, I could hear Mike bite, and I could see, I knew it was Mike bite because I, I sort of, I could see Nico a couple of times out the side of my eye that it was him. So I knew he was there, but I just didn't know what else was going on behind us. But in my own head, I, I was fairly sure that, that there can't be too many going very well now because you know everything had gone so, so smoothly. And you know, if you can keep an end to end up gallop up. At that end, you know, around here, you're going to put a lot of horses under pressure. So we went round this bend here, and actually, it's the next fence where I was squeezing him down, but I didn't want to ask him for a massive jump because it can be a little bit tricky. They, the landing runs away from you again a little bit, and uh, he actually came up the hands. He came, he came up a stride before I, I thought he was going to, and he gave it an extra foot, yeah. and we he, again he landed, and I just thought, well, he's, I've got plenty left. So um, that that's probably the. The best feeling because then I thought I could be really aggressive from there home uh, and you know you know you've got lots of little horses underneath you. And what was it like riding that? I imagine you've watched it back a few times and obviously you would be similar position to where you are now a bit close to the rail if I was Nico de Boinville coming up here and when you watch it on TV it looks like Nico's traveling the better of the two is that the same thing going through your mind? Yeah well, that's, that's the thing especially when I you ride a horse like Native River you know you know visually he never looks like he's sort of going to Sort of sprint away, um, but his, you know, his his great asset was a little bit like Flaggy from Morales. They, they they can be in, in you know almost top gear, which I think a Grade One horse can it, it make that makes a difference between a, a very good handicapper to a, to a graded horse. So they can go in that top gear all the way. Um, you know, there's no they don't need a breather. They don't need um, a slow run race. They don't. You know, it just you know they've just got that pure ability um, to, to to almost do it and do a bit more. Um, so, so I, I wasn't surprised to go down the hill, um, especially after the third last. And I, I sort of could feel Nico beside me, and I could, I could see, I could see, um, see his, see his head of the horse, and I could just, I knew that was him. But I sort of knew that, you know, how, however well he's going, the horse I'm riding, like Nature Review, you just know you can give. You know, I could throw the kitchen sink at him, and I, I, knew, I knew he was going to. You know, he, he wasn't going to stop. You know, he had to actually come by me and, you know, and beat me rather than 
Native River wasn't just going to give up. So um, I think for me as a, as a jockey, having that, have, riding that sort of horse was always a pleasure because you, you know they're almost in the fight just as much as you are. Do you think Nif Native River was the best horse you rode around here? Um, it's very, very hard to, to, to look at those good horses and, and try and separate yeah. them in, in, in different ways. But on the day you won the Gold Cup, again, you know, you talk about different horses on different days, but I think that was his peak, as it were. Um, a bit like Rooster Booster when he won the champion hurdle, yeah. everything went right. You know, Nature River jumped impeccably. Um, just it all went perfectly for me, and, and I think if, yeah, look, it would have been a, it would have taken an amazing horse to get by him on that day. Um, it's it just yeah, on that day, I, I've never had a horse to jump, especially in a, in a in that type of race, but you know so well throughout the whole race. You know whether he's under pressure or whether he was, um, you, you know, early sta early stage of the race. So if we get sort of into this fence, this is one that's notoriously tricky. Why do you think that is? As, as you can see, you come off the bend um, and you just just start running down. It's only a very gradual, but it's almost a free wheel around the bend, so you can almost get going a bit quicker than you know their their sort of normal you know position or the normal way they, way they would get to a, a fence. So they're almost a little bit we'd say on their forehand, which means they're sort of top heavy. I suppose their their the weight is almost um, going through their shoulders, and all of a sudden we are asking them to jump a jump. Um, and they jump it and, and again gravity is, is you know it sounds a very basic thing but th their weight is almost going the wrong direction so they can they can jump it quite well you'll often see a horse jump this fence really well um, and just pitch on landing and then you know stumble to the ground and they haven't hit the fence and you're thinking well, why why have they fallen but I think it, it is the gravity really and, and as they come around the bend they're almost just almost <laughs> when you you, know, you you can imagine what it's like for a human we, when we're running downhill you feel like your body's going to overtake your legs yeah. and, and that is yeah, you know, the, the the most important thing, and Cheltenham actually have they moved the fence back this way a little bit just to so, so there wasn't so, so much of a downhill sort of slope after the fence, um, which which has definitely helped. But again, it is a really tricky fence, and it's a really important time in the race when everyone's very competitive. But you're sort of thinking, I don't want to be too brave if you ask for a massive jump and they over jump and fall over, your race is gone. So it, it is a important part of the race to to make sure yeah you, you you're where you want to be, but a little bit you've got to think a little bit sensible as well and just on falls obviously like many jockeys you've had plenty of them in in your career and you you were telling me recently that a lot of them always came on your right hand side of your body in terms of bones that you've broken which is it's odd to explain isn't it really yeah um i, and I can't really give you any <laughs> any um sensible sensible reasons but i think yeah i've, I've broken most of my bones have all, have all been on the right hand side i'm actually left-handed to, to to use a pen so whether well, I don't care about my right hand side. I'm not quite sure, but um, I obviously felt I obviously felt that that way, and, and yeah, unfortunately, that's took on all the all the brunt the brunt of it really. So, Richard, we're we're sort of getting right into the the meat and gravy of it now. Right at the the end, there's only a couple of flights left to go. You were just saying the the ground there on the, right up against the rail is only used on Gold Cup day, so that was a native river route. Yeah, if you know, they they obviously got the Gold Cup is the the big event of the whole year, and and, and they they always leave uh, say you can see here now it's probably about eight meters on the inside that is left completely for that for that meeting um on the friday and actually it, it is it's really important because again you've got the best horses you want to give them the best ground and for me native river i knew the best ground is down the inside it's the shortest way around you know that's where i wanted to be but obviously everybody wants to be there so there is there is a bit of sort of jostling for positions but again that's why sometimes you know the start is important because if you can get that in nice position over the first second fence then actually you know sort of that that's your position and people can't take it off you unless you you drift off it so getting that nice rhythm you know, the shortest way around yeah obviously that's where everybody wants to be but again it, it yeah with him it all went you know like clockwork but again it, 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 even even if you're three or four off the rail the, the, the ground is really nice obviously this year we've had a quite a dry winter but you know last year with with, with really really wet um through the winter at least if you were three or four off the rail you still had fresh ground um, where on a lot of tracks by march um doesn't matter where you go you're going to get um, you know, quite a lot of mud and you know grant has had a really hard time so yeah we, we at least you know come to the gold cup you know you you will have some decent ground um and it's in the best possible position and just on this side is obviously the hurdles course and used for the triumph which was i think your most successful <laughs> Cheltenham festival race here anyway wasn't it 
three times last time with, with Deffy Dissell. Yeah, no, um, yeah, Philip, he never has, Philip Hobbs never has lots of juveniles, but he, he, he was, he seemed to be very good at finding the right ones. He, um, you know, bought the right type of horse and we were just saying like, you really, to win the Triumph, you really need to stay a, you know, a lot of the Triumph hurdle sort of winners go on to, you know, end up running over three miles. Um, obviously there's occasional ones that will come back obviously and win the champion hurdle, but it's, it's probably few and far between. Um, but yeah, you know, likes of Detroit City and, um, you know, he was probably almost the best really, you know, he, he, he just got better and better as he went. Um, and yeah, Jimmy, you got some good horses that, that, that won that and went on to do great things. But I think we were saying the second last is here. It's an awful long way to the winning post from here. So it really is a stayers race and you need, you know, again, a, they're only four year olds. So, you know, you need a real tough horse with the right, you know, the, the right constitution to, to really get stuck in and, 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 and win a, win a triumph. And like you say, it, it is a long way up. And again, it, it's so up and down when people will watch them home or even if you're up in the stands, you don't really get to see this part of the track close up. So it's so undulating. Yeah, I think that's 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 the big thing we were saying earlier about Cheltenham. You're always sort of, even though it's a, it's a stayers track and you need to stay, if you don't stay, there's no chance of winning, but you also need need a horse that handles the, the ups and downs and the, and, and, the, and the turns. You're always slightly on that left-handed turn here. Um, you know, there's very, very little of the course that's actually in a straight line. So, so it's a real test of, you know, probably horse and jockey, um, you know, position and um, right place, right time is very, very important. Um, I think Ruby, he was sort of king of Cheltenham and, you know, he obviously rode some very good horses, but he, he, he if you watch the replays back, he was always in the right place at the right time. And, and that's the thing that, you know, it does make a huge difference in, especially in big fields, you know, knowing how quick the, the rest are going and, and trying to work out you know what you should do at the right time and what give you the biggest thrill here a festival or non-festival days riding a hurdle winner here or a chase winner do you think the chase with the gold cup is probably gives it that edge for me the gold cup was always the race you know i for me it's the if you if i could pick a race all year that that would always be it whether it was at cheltenham or any other race course um but to be honest it doesn't matter if it was the bumper um just lucky enough to win once or the cross-country race every race here is very special you 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 know, I think when you retire, <laughs> you even need more time to think about it. But, you know, as, as, a, as a child, even growing up, just to ride here was, um, you know, a dream rather than anything else. So, you know, I feel very lucky to have, yeah, had a good taste of it and uh, lots of memories. And your first Gold Cup obviously came fairly early in, in your career. You were fresh faced then anyway, <laughs> when you watched the, the, the replays back. And what was it like to, to get that kind of win so early on? Yeah, look, it was amazing, and, and and you know I was lucky enough to pick up the ride quite late on, and um, I probably didn't, well, I definitely didn't appreciate it at the time, you know how important to me it would have been, and how you know I knew it was amazing, but um, how hard it was to get a horse to, to ride in the Gold Cup, um, or, or two to win it, um, and for me, you know that was a real turning point in my career. I think obviously I was lucky enough to win the Stairs on Anzum the year before, which was a bit, not a surprise, but he was forty to one, and it was I was just starting to get more and more rides, but. I think to win the Gold Cup, you know, you, you know, whether you're English, Irish, even, you know, ev everybody watches, especially the Gold Cup. Um, yeah, and then I probably got that chance to ride a slightly better type of horse going forward. Um, and just, yeah, it opens more doors for you. So, so it was huge for my career. And he also now lives at home with me now. He's, he's 30 years old now, looks like trouble. And still, uh, st still, still going strong. So, um, no, you know, he's, he's great to, he's part of my, my family still. And, he was a yeah, huge point in my career. And obviously later it became a family connection as well through who was the trainer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no chance. Yeah, no, he's now my father-in-law as well. So, yeah. Um, obviously, yeah, wasn't at the time, but um, yeah, no, Fiona, my wife, and that's obviously why he lives at home with us now. He's, I think he's, he's her pet really, but um, <laughs> again, he, you know, it, yeah, I didn't obviously expect that, that all that at the time, but um, no, again, it, it, it's amazing how things sort of work out. I, I, I'd ridden for Noel, you know, quite a bit before on and off. Um, but yeah, do you mean suddenly to for him to bring up and say, well, ask me to ride the horse in the Gold Cup? Um, you know, yeah. Again, looking back at it now, it was a, a huge point in my career, and you know, was, I'm very grateful for him for giving me that opportunity. And and actually, I again, I I never realised, I definitely didn't realise how lucky I was at the time to to ride a Gold Cup winner. And yeah, I, it took me 18 years to, to to redo it. So I think at the time I thought it, it, they'd come round every every couple of years. Um, but that that was the one thing that I think. When Native River won it, I, I really, I probably, I took it all in a lot more, and yeah. Um, yeah, really enjoyed enjoyed that day in a way more because I realised how lucky I was. 
and obviously you had a big connection with with Philip Holtz throughout your career um, unbelievable success over the best part of three decades I think 20% strike rate so how important was he to your career and obviously vice versa you to him well, yeah, I think he was he was very important to my career. I'm not sure. I think, you know, any jockey would have loved to ride for him. And, and you know, he's he's just, you know, a fantastic man to ride for. He's obviously a brilliant trainer as well. So it's it's a very good combination. But, um, you know, from my career, he was fantastic. Look, as a jockey, you're always going to pick up injuries, whether it's, you know, uh, you know, you're a bit sore and you miss two days or whether you break a leg and you miss three months. So having that trainer behind you that is there for you and sort of almost... You know, wants you to do well as well, and you know, as soon as you're back ready to race, race, um, you know, the horses are there to ride. And um, you know, for me, he was, yeah, I couldn't have worked for a better man. I was very lucky through my career to start off with David Nicholson, and, and he sort of, I think, put, put point me in the right direction. And then when he retired, I, I rode for Alan King quite a lot, and then started riding for um, Philip Hobbs. Um, yeah, you know, I was still only quite young, but you know, that that really. You know, I think I rode yeah, for Philip for 20 years. It's um, to have a partnership like that was, I was yeah, I feel very very lucky to to have had that you know situation really. And obviously, I'm going to let you take the reins. <laughs> pardon the pun now from here. Two f- flights to go in the Gold Cup. The the stands are, are back upon us again, and there's different ways you won from here. And lo- uh, looks like trouble sort of went across the track a little bit to the right hand side. Native River was was right up the rail. So you talk us through them them two moments. Yeah, I think you know when you when you get to this point, you come off that last bend. Obviously, you know, even if you jump the fence in the middle or, or on the inside, it's the same distance to the winning post. So, so you're just coming off the bend, trying to get a a, a, a good rhythm um, and keeping a you know keep the horse going forward. And to be fair, you know, some horses when they get here, as I say, obviously the crowd's huge and all the people, and you're going up almost like a funnel. Do you mean there's loads of people both sides? So some horses will react differently. Um, obviously, might bite when he won the. RSA yeah. is a good good, uh, good example. He obviously ran all over the place, but um, I think, yeah, you know, you're just wanting to keep, keep the horse going forward and you're the best one in the world. But off that bend, all you can think about is winning. You know, there's not, not a lot else goes through your mind um, and you're just trying to keep the horse going forward. Um, so, so I think you, you're, you're asking the horse for 110%, you know, 100% is not quite enough. So, um, and you just want to meet the fences in a, in a again, on a nice stride so you, so, you, so you can just keep asking them rather than having to sort of sit still and let them lose any momentum. So, that, so that's, that's the important thing. But um, any jockey who says um, they were thinking about this and that, I'm, I, I, well, I'd have to disagree. I think all that's going through my head is getting from that winning post as quickly as possible. Yeah, and back in the years, not as much now, but they would, people would line this rail even though it's in the middle of the track in terms of stable lads and lasses. Does that make it any more tricky to see? Because again, that funnels it a little bit, a bit yeah, more. Yeah, I, I don't think that matters too much. I think, like you say, but you, you, you've just got this green strip of ground, and you, you're looking at these fences. And um, again, even if you're on the hurdle course, you know, all you want to do is 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 keep the horse going forward. And you're ask, you, you know, to be fair to the horse, we're asking them to do almost the impossible, to gallop as fast as they can gallop, and jump <laughs> as quickly as they can jump. So um, again, you know, you're asking them for absolutely everything. But I think that's again. Especially at the Cheltenham Festival, this is, this is where you see the the really brave horses dig in and find a bit more. And Native River is obviously the prime example. Mike Bite was probably, you know, visually going better than I was. Going to the second last fence, I, I, I jumped the second last really well, and I almost I, I could sort of feel I could see his head just. You could see it's almost moving more. He was obviously Nico was obviously asking for everything, and you know it's obviously easy afterwards to. <laughs> watch the video but you know I think you know this is we're about halfway between the two now just just a bit more and this is probably where Native River really won his gold cup yeah you know, and it sounds silly after three mile two well in a three mile two race it's that last that last furlong furlong and a half that that made the difference exactly and there's a lot made from sort of this point that horses don't get up the hill Native River definitely did get <laughs> up the hill but is it when you ride it is it as bad as what it's made out to be in terms of that it takes some really getting or do some think, horses just gallop the way through it? I think it, it, it's more the fact that uh, ahead in a championship race that you don't have a time to for the horse to have a, a quiet time you know you're on you're on the you know on, on the on the ask all the time as a jockey to for them to do their best and it's just I think you know I, I know myself from going for a run you get to a point and you think I'm tired now yeah. where you know these very good horses 
and the best of the best, you know, they when you ask them, they just seem to find a bit more. And, and you know, even even when you're asking them for more, you're thinking, I'm not sure you've got any more, but I, I'm going to ask. And they, they just seem to find that they pull that little bit more out. It's it's incredible when you see again, especially at the Fetchland Festival, the best of the best just pull away from the rest, and you think there's something about them that's, that makes them a bit special. And you're going pretty quick up here as well, aren't you? What's that sort of feeling? Obviously, you've experienced it every day, but from a, a person who doesn't ride horses, who watches and horse racing at home, how quick is, is the feeling of going through this part of the race? I'd say you're going quick, but I think you're, you're, in, the, you're in that sort of, I suppose you're on the horse. You, you, as good horses can go that quick and, and do it. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the, you know, some of the horses that just aren't, aren't as good, they're the ones that really find it, it almost feels like you're going quicker on a slow horse because you're almost, you know, their their legs are almost going faster than their body can take them. Where, you know, especially in a champion hurdle, obviously, you know, from the la over the last hurdle, I mean, I don't know what the exact speeds are, but you're obviously asking them for everything, and they're and they're quick horses. So, you know, and and, and you're asking to jump a herd as well. So, yeah, on, on you know, you, you you it almost feels like you're flying sometimes. Um, but again, on the good ones, it just feels natural and normal. On the on the not, not so good ones, sometimes it feels a bit a bit hairy and and. Uh, close to the edge and obviously this year you'll be at the festival or hoping to be for, for some of the days but as a spectating capacity now how do you think if there's a Philip Hobbs horse coming to this last year and it's going well like you say how, how will that feel from sat watching it in the stands this time <laughs> well look I, I, I'm yeah look I'd love to see Philip have some winners here and um you know I'll be I'll be pleased for everyone that does obviously there'll be a bit of me that thinks oh, it could have been me and and you know I I I think it would be weird if I didn't miss it. Um, you know, even if I've been at wherever I've been through the through the season so far, you, you know, there, there is a bit that either misses it because um, there's no there's no way in the world I can recreate that that buzz yeah. of riding a winner. Um, you know, again whether it's on a Monday or whether it's at the F Friday at the Fet Cheltenham Festival. So, um, but yeah, look, I'd love to see Philip. You know, he's got some lovely young, young horses again now, and he's had a good season. And yeah, I'm, I'm fingers crossed. I'll be cheering, cheering, cheering them on and. You know, watching him uh, walk into the winners' enclosures, that would be great. And I know you've, you're have still involved around yards around the country. Do you still enjoy getting back in? And will we ever see Richard Johnson, the trainer, or is, <laughs> is it the farm life that's for you now? Yeah, no, I definitely won't. Um, I won't. I won't be a trainer. I think uh, like I love the horses, and you know we're breeding uh, horses at home now. We've sort of nine or ten brood mares, and, and uh, you know it's sort of a different a different way. But I, you know, I, you know, hopefully we'll see those horses. I'd love to think I can breed a horse good enough to well to run in the Gold Cup, let alone win it. But um, yeah, that's the dream for me now is almost just to see those horses um you know come and perform on the big stage so um that, that that's sort of where i'm the angle i'm going for but um i'll never i'll never get bored of coming racing and, and actually you know horse racing has been very very good to me and it's, it's what i enjoy you know doing as a hobby as, as well as as well as my career and just for we wrap up out here on the course obviously you're in the dying yards of the gold cup all the big races there's that line Keep getting further away. Does it never get closer? Never gets closer. Well, if you're in front, you hope you hope you, you wanted to get closer, but it feels like it's getting further away. Obviously, when you're, you're finishing with a wet sail, you you're almost hoping it doesn't doesn't come until you get there. But it is you know you, this point here now. Um, you know you've come up the hill. You you really are sort of you know every horse doesn't matter how good they are are starting to feel it now. Um, but again, you you just you know when you get to the front, say after the last, you're dying for that winning post to come and just. Get, get it over and done with um, but again you know it, it's it's one of the best places to be um, when it all goes right it's perfect and just as you come up to the winning post you, you weren't one always for massive celebrations but when it got to a festival winner there was there were some good celebrations as you crossed the line especially towards the fans who were, who were on this right hand side yeah I think I think you, you mean it's, it's, it's hard not to be excited and I think sometimes you're almost you, you know you don't even know what's going on you, you literally it's almost um, you, you're obviously excited and delighted, but almost, yeah, it's like you, you, you can't quite believe it until you get actually past the winning post. Um, and I think, yeah, especially when I was younger, I, yeah, do you mean you, you almost except celebrate that much? You probably nearly fall off. So, um, <laughs> but again, it's 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 an amazing feeling. You, you, again, I can't quite even now. It's hard to describe the the feeling. And when you obviously the horses keep cantering up a bit further, and you know you pull up, and all all the lads come round you, and like we all want to win, but you know we all know that. It's hard, and you know, after the race, it's always nice to go and say well done to the, the winning jockey. Um, obviously, if you finish, finish second, beating about half a length, it's it's, it's a bit it's a bit it's a bit of a hard feeling to to say well done to the, the, the lad that beat you. But 
it's um yeah it, it, there's no better feeling to be walking around there after the race and everyone's saying well done and you, you know you feel like you've yeah you've achieved something that you know is very difficult and you, you know it's, it's what you dream about and obviously they say about the derby that horse racing depends on the winning post there but i think with jumps racing it's probably that winning post there yeah i think i think i think these, these two uh, little white posts with the red <laughs> red dots on the top you know i mean for yeah for, for a jockey do you, you mean some some days you're dying for it to come like you say and some days you you, you want it to be further away but again it's you know they, they've these two posts have made a lot of difference to my career and again after we after you've won the race when you're coming back down especially the festival with all those people you know the the, the it's just such a great atmosphere here. It, it, you, again, you could, if you could bottle it, it'd be worth a fortune. But you'd, it's one of those you, you can't recreate. But for four days every year, it's it's incredible. So Richard, obviously we're back off the track now into the into the uh, into the parade ring. Sorry, not the weighing room, <laughs> and um, a place where if you go into that number one sign over there, I imagine it's the best place to be. If you're ending up in the the other smaller parade ring, not so much. Yeah, not so good, and especially even for the owners, it's a bit of a probably an climax afterwards, I suppose. But Again, everyone's happy to be here, but it, it, again, this is where you want to be. Obviously, most importantly, in the in the winners' spot. Um, and, and again, for a jockey, when you walk in here, the noise and the people around you. You know, even the other connections of the, the place horses are, are, are clapping you, and you know, I think they all know, you know know how hard it is to to get to that winners' spot. So you, everyone's happy to to see whoever comes in. Um, but again, you, you you just can't you can't describe that feeling really. It's just you're obviously delighted for yourself, but for everybody around you, um, you know the groom of the horse is usually you know nearly in tears when they're walking back down the chute, um, and the owners you know almost can't believe they're lucky. You know even for the big owners, um, you know whether it's J.P. McManus or uh, whoever, you know they they still you know I think it even it takes their breath away every time, which is just is, is great to see really how, how much people pleasure they get out of it. And I think it was 23 times in the festival you come back to this spot anyway, so obviously no more now, but. Still, how do you look back on on your career and, and your festival successes as a whole? Oh, I'm very proud, really. I think that's the thing. I, you know, I, I was, I think I was very lucky to 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 become a jockey, which which is what I always obviously dreamed of doing. Um, and again, you just, it was almost a dream to get a ride at, at Cheltenham, not the festival. And then once you have a ride at Cheltenham, you have a dream of riding at the festival. And again, you know, I could never even really have dreamed of riding winners here. Um, so I think, yeah, for me, it was. Yeah, just really proud to have been here and, and, and achieved it and, and actually I'm very lucky now to be able to watch some of those replay, replays back and, you know, they, yeah, you'll never get tired of watching them. Brilliant, Richard. It's been an absolute honour to, to walk around the track with you and, and be what is your sort of home turf in a way coming here at the festival. You were our leading British rider for a long time anyway, so it's been brilliant. Thanks very much for, for joining us and it's, it's great to have you as tour ambassador, head of the festival. No, it was great, great to work with the tote now and, and be so involved in racing. So um, fingers crossed the British can uh, yeah, have, have, have a good festival and uh, we'll have plenty to cheer about.